Greetings and welcome back to Star Drive 2. So in the meantime I've been doing a little bit of reading on the game and it seems like there's already quite a few early reviews out there and a lot of people are actually complaining about the difficulty of the game that it is uh, way too difficult to start out and well I guess there may be some truth to that the first few times that I, st that I started the game I uh, got totally obliterated by the uh, AI but uh, still I think uh, a big part of it is that people just need to still learn how to play the game. There is a lot to it. And uh, yeah, that's not to say that I already know how to play it. I may, st may still get uh, obliterated in the next few episodes. We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, the developer did release a patch in which uh, easy mode is made a bit easier. So um, maybe that'll work. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. Right, now uh, back to the game. I've also been... Um, looking around and uh, in my game that I saved after the last episode and I've kind of neglected a few things for example my uh, race they are cybernetic I knew that but I didn't really look into it that much until now and the thing with cybernetics is that uh, they don't reproduce the uh, regular way you need to build your citizens as you can see here and they actually cost quite a lot uh, 20 turns as you can see 200 production and another thing about this is that you may have noticed it and I also noticed that when I was playing last episode that this is always set on zero turns because well uh, the only use for uh, excess food is to make people reproduce and really I don't have any use for that at the moment so they still use food all my uh, cybernetics uh, just to survive but you can uh, get rid of that if you build a charging hub. This will make it so that your cybernetics do not require any food anymore. But uh, there is a downside to that, and that is that it... Um, oh, wait a minute. That is that it is costing me 4 per turn, 4 currency per turn, if I were to build this. So that's, uh, that's quite expensive. But then again, if you were to build this, that would mean that you need a lot less farmers and that you can have a lot more people in production and this also means that you would be getting a lot more tax money so uh, things may even out uh, I'm guessing that it would be worth it to build a charging hub on the bigger planets and not on the smaller ones so that means that you still have a need for food despite having charging hubs on the small planets uh, on the big planets because you still need to supply all the small planets with food so Yes, there's uh, quite a lot of choices to be made. Also, in the meantime, I've been working on some ships. Let's take a look here. So, I've been uh, looking around the... Um, what is it? Soldier class frigate. This is the basic frigate that you start out with. The basic combat frigate. And let's take a... Yeah, I don't think I looked at this all this much last episode. So, I'm going to do it now. So this is the layout for this frigate. And this is an empty one. And there's actually quite a lot of room on this one. A lot of other races have not this much room to uh, place modules. So that's, I guess, a nice thing. Uh, all right, so here you can see all this red is the firing arc for these weapons. And as you can see from all of this, this ship fires uh, mostly forward, uh, which can be a problem especially versus these little ships, corvettes, they may uh, run laps around your ship, which is uh, not good. So I've uh, been busy trying to make some uh, variants of this. For example, I have the bomber frigate that I made. I slapped on some rockets and this should be a more long-ranged ship. So this one should be more in the back. And I also put a uh, turret in the front with a big firing arc to hopefully still cause some uh, more damage. Uh, especially when the rockets are out because uh, there's a certain amount of ammunition that you have depending on how much ordnance storage you have on your ship and as you can see here um, my ammo would be gone in 129 seconds so that's uh, quite fast afterwards you need to rely on the laser cannon so yeah and the laser cannon can actually almost shoot indefinitely because I do have a lot of power and a decent amount of uh, power capacitors so I made another one somewhat in between uh, this one here 
Soldier Class Frigate Mark 1.2. So that's a little bit of a variant on the regular one. As you can see, I changed some things down here. I uh, exchanged these for uh, turrets, as you can see, with a huge firing arc to hopefully make it so that, uh, well, these ships will pretty much always be able to shoot at something. And this is sort of as a defense against these smaller ships because even if they run laps around this one, this one will still be able to shoot at everything. So I hope these uh, ships work. <laughs> they may very well be terrible, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Right. Okay, well, I'm still building a ship down here. This is uh, a regular soldier class frigate. So I'm gonna let this one build, but I might actually move one of these farmers over here. This will make it so that this ship is built in four turns. I uh, This will be shrinking, however, but I think I have... Uh, in four turns, it shouldn't be... It shouldn't be completely gone. There is really... There isn't any number on this, which is kind of unfortunate, so a uh, full bar would be 30 units. So I'm guessing this is somewhat like, um, I don't know, about 6 or 7 units, which should last me about uh, 10 to 15 turns at this rate, so we should be totally fine until the next ship comes off the assembly line. Right, and as for our explorer ship, I will send him off for some uh, fuel first and then I'm gonna go over here there seems to be something special down here it doesn't look all too um, friendly but <laughs> I really have no idea what it is so uh, we'll have to find out right so let's continue oh and we have red crystal spotted one of the automated drones that we used to map the edge of our known space has returned sensor data suggesting contact with an alien entity the probe was destroyed, but before it was destroyed, it sent back the attached image. It appears to be some sort of crystalline entity. Without a closer encounter, we won't be able to determine its true nature. It may be advisable to prepare some sort of space defenses in case this creature starts seeking bigger game. And uh, then an automated probe. Alright, so... That's at least one threat we have to look out for. So it's a good thing that we are building some uh, defenses. Should have a ship right now. Okay. Let's go back to the assembly. As you can see, it did shrink a little, so I'm going to be moving this guy back here. And. Yeah, also, I did mention that the excess of food is really not useful for these, but it kind of is. If you. If you fill up this bar, it kind of gives you some, uh, some leeway with uh, assi uh, assigning your workers. So. One other thing is that, as you can see here, I have a uh, excess of two food. And that's actually... Well, normally I would be aiming for zero, seeing as I'm playing with cybernetics, but there is no way yet for me to share food between colonies, because I don't have any freighters, so I have to build that as well. I've got a lot to build, really. So, let's see what we can get next. I'm not going to be building a charging hub just yet. Hmm... Let's see, freighter would take five turns. I might try to make a freighter. And I'm also going to be queuing up the bomber frigate after this. All right. Actually, I might need to make the bomber first because I do want to have two ships in case I get attacked. There we go. All right. Now my ship should be uh, refueled, and we can go take a look at whatever the hell this is supposed to be. In the meantime, I'm also not really researching anything because I have everything set on production. But once we uh, once we build all the ships, I can reassign some people for uh, research. There seems to be an anomaly in the middle. Not uh, surprising. Let's go a bit closer. Let's see what it is. Huh. Let's go and have a look. Uh, Port Sorrow Canteen. 
Okay. Port Soro is a crowded and busy trading post. Aliens of every species you have seen, and many more that you have not. I, your Imperial ships. Okay, I didn't know I was Imperial. Oh well. Uh, with distrust, it appears that all of the port's business and pleasure are uh, commingled in this single cavernous cantina, the Wretched Hive. In one corner of the cantina, a number of hard looking spacefarers gamble and caroose. A trade board behind the bar lists the various goods available for purchase at the port. Alright. So we got a little bit of a choice here. Um, talk to the captains or inspect the trade board. Uh, let's ex inspect the trade board. So. Megafauna. Okay. Some uh, class 2 shields. Or more uh, leaders. I'm guessing that'll be some sort of a hero character, like the one we uh, bought before. Let's leave it alone and let's take a look at the captains. A uh, oh, Corsair carrier. And Max, Max or Grown troops. Alright, well, I don't have money for anything at all, so I'm going to be leaving that for now. Let's uh, send our ship over here. In the meantime, let's take a look at what's happening down here. Not all that much yet. One turn until the bomber frigate is done. Okay, there we go. Now we at least have two ships. I feel a little bit safer. Just a little bit. <laughs> now, yes, let's make a freighter. That seems appropriate. And scouts have arrived. Let's take a look at this system. Uh, we have some more spice here. That's good. Because I do have one spice down here. Uh, two spice. If I were to take this system, I'd have three. And I need four before I get the exploitation bonus, which is, which is a plus one research per scientist. Which is actually quite good. So that is uh, tempting. But uh, we're still quite far away from colonizing another planet. Let's go and take a look at this place. Still no sign of the, uh, oh, I was just going to say, no sign of these guys, but uh, apparently they are here. And they are going there. What do they have? They have two ships. Okay, I might be able to handle that. So we'll be seeing some uh, combat this time. They seem to be going straight for my planet, which is not good. Let's see if we can intercept them. Oh, well, that's not very good. I totally didn't see that. Um, yeah, my ship is going to die. Look at that. So, yeah, these are the white crystalline entities. I encountered these before in another game. And they actually have some uh, very dangerous ships, it seems. These are the small ones. I think these are the, are the medium ones. Uh, these would be corvettes, these would be frigates, and this would be a cruiser, I suppose. So let's just uh, go to fight this one because, yeah, there was going to be no way that I would survive that. So, yeah, the system is pretty much off limits for the for the moment. In the meantime, this uh, freighter is actually completed, it seems. So we have two freighters that are now doing trade transport, apparently. We don't have any food holders doing anything. Alright, well, what do we build next? I kind of want to... Okay, now it's shrinking again, so... I do want to get some research in, but unfortunately I don't really have the luxury at the moment. Let's build another ship. Let's build the uh, Mark 1.2. I need more ships. Oh, okay, now they are coming straight for me. So, let's see how this one evolves. If I get obliterated or not. And let's uh, fight this one out ourselves. Normally, I should stand a chance. I do say normally. These are uh, small ships, as you can see. They are a corvette size. So, these ones will most likely 
attempt to run laps. Actually, they may be frigate size. I don't know. So, let's take a look. So, also, you don't see any keybinds at all in this game, so it's kind of difficult to find out which button does what, but um, in case you're wondering, you can actually watch the, the loadout of your ship. So, all you need to do is uh, press tab and click on it, or uh, just click on it and press tab. It's the same. And if you zoom in, you can see the loadout of uh, my ships. So, this is the bomber, as the name indicates, and this is the uh, regular ship. And if we go over here, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna see. Uh, nothing at all, apparently. Because uh, these guys, I guess, don't have any loadout at all. They are just um, one organism. So, uh, the bomber has a big engagement range. Normally I should be able to see that. I'm not sure anymore which button it was. Okay, normally I should be able to see the engagement range of my ships. Alright, well anyway, I know this one is... Well, you can see it here. Oh yeah, look, there we go. So, this is the range at which I can shoot things. And this is the amount of damage that I can output at that range. So, this is mainly because of the rockets. And when you can see it go up here, this is because of the turret. And this one is a lot shorter range, so I will be moving this one forward. And we'll, moving, we'll be moving this one in the back. And I'll just let them uh, come towards me. And let's begin. They're actually pretty fast. I don't really need to move at the moment. Let's just see where it goes. Normally my bomber should be firing some uh, missiles when they come to range. Yeah, there we go. My turret is working as well. And this is exactly why I wanted uh, another ship that was able to fight at, uh, in every direction. What is he doing? So yeah, these uh, ships are very fast. and see how this one plays out. Uh, let's take a look at my ships. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of damage already on this one. And this one seems to be still reasonably fine. However, I don't think he has a lot of rockets left. Okay, I think one is down. Alright, so we actually stand a chance. Seems to take a long time before the ship turns around. This one should still be able to output a bunch of damage. Okay. Yeah, these guys turn around very fast. They are uh, kind of jousting now. This is also why you really need more than one ship. This one shouldn't last too long. It already seems pretty damaged. I can't really see the hit points of it. Is it dead? No, almost I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we won. That's very good. Alright, so what do we got? Uh, commendations awarded to any ship that has been reduced to uh, less than 35%. Uh, Okay, so uh, the ship gains some damage reduction whenever they go under a 35%. That's pretty good. Okay, let's finish. So that first fight went uh, pretty well. At least we got rid of that threat. 
Uh, we have examined the wreckage, or perhaps corpse would be a better term, of the defeated red crystal. This examination has revealed two incredible facts. First, that the entities are capable of generating their own subspace fields using some sort of resonance within their own crystalline structures. But this discovery pales in comparison to our second discovery. These particular crystals are wired up with some sort of electronic harness. More shockingly, the harness uses components that are clearly of our own creation. Okay, uh, Some components even bear serial numbers that can be traced to our homeworld. Clearly, there is more going on than meets the eye. It could be our top priority to discover the origin of these entities and to unravel just how and why our technology is being used to agitate them into violence. The plot thickens. Yes, indeed. Alright, so this ship is in a somewhat bad shape. I will be uh, retreating the fleet to our homeworld. Because, as you can see here, the uh, self-repair state or rate is at 1% and it gets to 5% uh, if you are close to a colony and uh, you get 5 more percent if you are next to a shipyard or station and we have a station here we don't have one on the other system so let's just continue uh, he wants to trade automated rover bait technology for what Hell no. He just wanted me to give it to them. That's not gonna happen. In the meantime, are we building anything? Yes, we are still building the uh, third frigate. Afterwards, I can actually, hopefully, do some research. Now, as you can see, it's up to 11%, so it should take... I don't know, about uh, six turns or something before this one is fully repaired. In the meantime, we should be getting the other frigate so that we have a fleet of three. I'm also trading now, so as you can see, I'm making four per, uh, well, per turn from a trade, so that's uh, very nice. Okay, there we go. We got another frigate. We now have three ships. That kind of makes me feel a little bit more safe. Now, let's perhaps do some uh, research, I suppose. Because we haven't really done all that much yet. Now, what exactly should I be uh, researching? So, soil enrichment only works on planets that actually have soil. That makes sense. But I'm going to go be going for uh, aeroponic farms. It seems the uh, easiest to use because there's a lot of barren and toxic worlds everywhere and I think this is better. Especially considering the fact that my people are poor farmers so this kind of makes it so that this uh, flat rate of plus three food is pretty good and it also makes that if I build this on a barren world I might not need any farmers at all which is very good in my case. So this uh, pretty much could supply many small worlds with all the food they need because they won't be having any of those uh, charging stations because they are too expensive. So let's research this. 28 turns, that's quite a lot. And also seeing as I do have plenty of money now because of the trade, let's drop this one down. Let's see. That'll give me a bit more production, which could be useful because I need to build something. More freighters, perhaps. Yeah, let's build one more freighter fleet. Six turns. That should do. ship is nearly fully repaired, which is good. Okay, now I think it is. Yeah, alright. So, I'm gonna be sending him off somewhere in between our systems. And we have another freighter fleet. Okay, that's very good. Now, normally, if I move this one here, 
you know, it's still shrinking. That's, that's kind of odd. Normally my freighter should be hauling food back and forth. Doesn't make all too much sense, but uh, all right, I guess I'll keep it at this for now. So, oh yeah, and I guess I should be building something new now. So, I could build a citizen. Oh, that reminds me, I do have, I can uh, ship people between planets now. So, uh, let's see, this guy, if I move you down here. Yeah, okay, so I can do that now. Uh, food should be shipped over here. As you can see, it is down to zero. And now we have one food hauler. So this means that we have a little bit of production down here now. So let's start off with the rover bay. It's going to take me 20 turns. That's quite a lot. But that should up production by uh, quite a lot down here so that I can build more stuff. Uh, right. Let's continue. In the meantime, we are researching and we are not building anything down here. Let's go like this. Uh, put everything in the research. Wait, oh, right, this is my uh, freighters. And I think you can actually uh, put some ships in that fleet to uh, protect them. I haven't really tried that out yet, but uh, let's just take a look if it works. No, they're gone. Okay. I guess that doesn't work. Uh, my trade treaty has expired. Okay, well, let's uh, get a new one, maybe. I'm also probably gonna be needing to build a new exploration ship. Right, let's get some trade going again. Hopefully he uh, agrees. Okay, he does. Let's confirm the deal. There we go. Some uh, more trade. That's very good. In the meantime, we have uh, plenty of money, which is uh, quite nice. I might be needing that eventually. Our uh, aeroponics farm research is now completed and that allows me to uh, and it seems like this uh, music is pretty loud so I'm gonna get rid of it <laughs> so now I can build aeroponics and it seems like we still have nine turns to go for the rover bay back here all right well I guess we can build some aeroponics down here Although I don't really have uh, any construction going at all. Actually it would... Oh yeah, 16 turns because I do get a flat rate because of the rover bay that I built here. So that would give me three more food. Which means I would be able to reassign a whole bunch of these farmers to do other jobs. Which will uh, very much help me in terms of production and research. So that would be nine turns. So I'm really... 7 turns, okay, 9 turns is uh, decent. And then 9 turns, I should be getting a big surge in production and research. In the meantime, you have to do some uh, new research, so... Um, I guess we could do uh, some research philosophy. So here again, I have the choice between either uh, the university, which will allow the, all the scientists to output more research or the research lab. I think I'll go with the university. I think it's more interesting. Right. Six more turns until these two buildings are done. Even uh, oh yes, I explored these ones. Also, it seems like this one was already explored as well. I'm not sure why. Oh, there seems to be someone living here. That's kind of odd. Uh, 
and it's purple. I'm not sure who the hell purple is supposed to be. And I don't even know why I'm seeing this this um, system, because I've never been there, I think. So that's kind of odd. Okay, oh, higher hero. Rygar, noble capitalist. This is leader, economic leader. Uh, three BC, BC per turn, that's quite steep. Well, he might pay off eventually. Let's, uh. Actually, we don't have the money. Reject. Yeah, I, I don't have the money for it. Uh, we can still hire him for uh, 30 more turns. Alright, so in Empire Management screen you can see all the leaders. So this one we hired and we can fire. <laughs> this one we can still get. So I still have 30 turns to uh, change my mind. Right, and we also built some stuff now here. So we got the we got the aeroponics farm, so let's see what we can do back here. So I was able to move away two of these farmers, which is very good. That uh, pretty much doubled my research and that uh, added quite a bit of production. It's very nice. And I get the rover back here, which means that I'm getting a lot of production now. So, uh, which still 25 turns for a citizen. That's quite a lot, honestly. But I don't need any aeroponics at the moment. Although, then again, if I do build another aeroponics down here, all this food should be. Uh, moving towards my capital, which will allow me to uh, remove even more farmers, so yeah, that might actually be worth it. How long would it take to build? 10 turns, that's not too much. Let's do that. And then what do we build on our capital? Uh, hmm. More freighters, colony ship, We don't need an explorer. We can also make a bunch of these corvettes to try and strengthen up our fleet. They do not cost any... As you can see here, we need command points and it's one command point per frigate, I think, or two. No, two points per frigate. But the corvettes don't cost any command points until you go over the fleet cap. So we can make seven free corvettes, as it says in the tooltip. So I might make a few. I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it, but... Let's let's at least make one. Alright. Anyway, I guess I'll be ending this episode right here. So, yeah, we made a little bit of progress, although we didn't really colonize anything, but uh, at least we had a fight and we won, so... <laughs> Well, maybe except for this fight, but that wasn't really a fight, that was just a, an extermination, I suppose. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.